Hello, thank you for joining today's webinar. So let's get started. My name is Chris Eberly and I sit in the US having been with Plexum for a decade. I would like to welcome our participants today from all over the world and we hope you are safe and healthy. During today's webinar, I'm going to discuss some fundamentals to working with the electric machine components included with Plex block set and standalone. Uh, our collection of ready-made but adaptable machine models will meet the needs for most applications ranging from industrial to automotive. I also encourage you to ask any questions you have along the way in the GoToWebinar application window and we will try and answer those when appropriate or at the end of the session. And of course you can contact us offline by email using our general address info at plexin.com and I'm going to try and keep today's webinar to approximately 30 minutes. So first, I'm gonna provide an agenda for what I plan to cover and a brief background on our company. So here's today's agenda. As I said, we'll start with a quick introduction to Plexum and our simulation software Plex. I'll then review the electric machine component library, which includes uh, nonlinear machine models, <clears throat> excuse me, and supports both motoring and generating applications. We can then proceed to explore under the hood of a couple of these models in Plex. And I'll finish by running an application example, which specifically entails a DC motor drive simulation, which will allow me to demonstrate the fundamentals that I've discussed. All right, so Plexum has been around since 2002, started by, by two of my colleagues during their PhD studies at the Technical University of Switzerland, ETH or ETH. Uh, the company is still privately owned and based in Zurich. We do also have offices in the Boston area, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Seattle, Washington, where I sit. Uh, Plex is our uh, flagship product, a simulation software in two versions, Blockset and Standalone. Blockset being integrated into the MATLAB Simulink ecosystem and Standalone, which is an independent tool. And uh, Plex was developed from the very early days to solve uh, typical difficulties encountered by engineers when modeling and simulating power electronic and motor drive systems. And in recent years, it has been extended to include not just an electrical uh, component domain, but other physical domains. And it now also supports model-based development of controls with automatic code generation via the Plex Coder product. We do have some additional tools, including a real-time simulator platform that's called the RT Box, which can also be relevant for designing and testing systems that feature electric machines, uh, but these will not be discussed in today's session. And if you're interested, uh, there are other webinars available from us on the topics. Uh, and finally, we have numerous customers, uh, both worldwide and uh, industry and academia. All right, so, now then getting into the nuts and bolts of the topic. So on the right of this slide you see is a screenshot of the Plex component library. Um, so the library includes a multitude of electric machines that can be used to rapidly model complete motor drive systems. While for some applications a, a machine could be implemented by say a simple transfer function, um, perhaps rotating inertia or an inductive impedance uh, network as in an RL circuit and perhaps uh, an EMF voltage source. It is very instructive when, when designing uh, the power converters and Plex and, and mechanical loads and of course the associated control systems in a robust fashion to be able to also model the dynamics of the machine uh, with different operating conditions and more fidelity, also including nonlinearities like saturation so the benefits that these blocks bring over a very simple implementations are numerous. I'm now going to give a, a high-level overview of, of the various machine, machine types then that we provide. So one category uh, of machines in Plex are, of course, DC machines. These are by their very nature of not being excited by more common AC currents, um, say somewhat limited in, in their applications and yet are very prevalent in our daily lives. Um, so this component here, for example, uh, you can wire the, the field winding to be connected both in shunt and series with the armature winding. 
Um, while not excited by D DC currents and, and are technically therefore AC machines, um, the library also contains brushless DC machines. We have uh, AC induction machines at the top here, also known as asynchronous machines uh, with slip ring and squirrel cage implementations being the standard designs. Um, it's, it's definitely uh, clear that induction machines are, are the predominant machine type in, in the field. Um, in addition to being used for industrial purposes, these are also quite commonly deployed in, in home appliances, say with uh, fans, washing machines, you have it. And uh, we have multiple AC synchronous machines in the library here, uh, where common applications include electric utility generation, uh, traction applications with electric vehicles, uh, and the excitation for these can be via external windings or magnets built into the machine. And there are several components, as I said, that refer to the, the common configurations. Um, from this category, one that's very popular is specifically is a PMSM or permanent magnet signers machine. These are specifically um, used for high performance or, or high efficiency motor drives and are also commonly uh, found in electric vehicle drivetrains. There are some additional machine types being uh, switched and synchronous reluctance machines, um, more, more specialized, I'd say. Um, but anyway, while this is uh, by no means a, a comprehensive explanation of all the types, you should see that it's easy to explore offerings and you will likely find a machine for your particular use case. Um, if you do not, however, well, I will address that topic as well shortly. So fairly often we are asked by um, our, our customers and uh, prospective users about this topic. So I thought it was valuable to mention that all machine models in Plex are bi-directional um, in that they can not only operate as motors, but also as generators. Um, so quite simply, if the mechanical torque has the same sign as the rotational speed, the machine is operating in motoring mode, but otherwise is in generator mode. And so um, what you see here on this slide is a screenshot of the Plex scope. This is from one of our demo models. It's of a boosted motor drive. And you have two plots here at the top, the speed, and at the bottom, the torque. Um, so we have a repeated acceleration and deceleration of a PMSM in, in the motor drive. Um, and so what happens is during uh, the simulation and there's a bi-directional converter transferring energy to and from the battery and machine. And in uh, motoring operation, obviously the um, energy is from the battery to the machine. Uh, we can see that here in, in this portion of the curve um, where we see that there is a positive but, but pretty constant speed coinciding with a positive torque and then in the generation phase, the energy is transferred from the machine to the battery, where in this mode, we see that the speed falls back to zero, though is positive, uh, but crucially, the, the torque in this portion is negative, and then that just repeats itself several times. Moving on to another topic then, most electric machines are designed uh, to be operated at or, or near the magnetic uh, saturation point to maximize power density and to properly simulate such machines the models must incorporate the magnetic saturation curves inside them uh, to uh, so so plex then provides uh, advanced nonlinear motor models with the flexibility in configuring these saturation properties uh, but also very importantly the plex solvers can efficiently handle uh, the nonlinearity uh, as well so let me just move back here a couple of slides. Um, in this list, uh, you'll see uh, the keyword saturable here. So um, we have a saturable slip ring induction machine uh, and salient pole and round rotor versions of the synchronous machine that all incorporate saturation. Um, I'll also come back to uh, this machine model here in a minute. And when configuring these blocks, you will find that they include the saturated uh, magnetizing inductance as a parameter, 
and the user can also configure then the magnetizing flux at the saturation transition as well as the tightness of the transition uh, which in this particular demonstration is um, observable with the different curves uh, and, and I just pointed then to another model we, we included more recently a non-excited synchronous machine um, and that uh, with this block the the magnetization and saliency uh, saturation and cross coupling behavior all are all modeled by means of corresponding flux linkage and incremental inductance lookup tables so this particular block allows you to include the saturation characteristic uh, generated by an FEA or, or a finite element analysis simulation and then link that nonlinear or uh, time varying saturation data with a Plex model. So I will be sure to, to show that block uh, when we hop over to Plex momentarily. Uh, great. So uh, now I am going to switch over to Plex to show a few of the, the key concepts within the electric machines themselves. So here we have uh, Plex standalone with the component library browser on the left and the schematic window on the right. I should mention that all of the components I'm about to show are certainly in the uh, Plex block set library as well. The machines are found in the electrical component library in the subcategory of uh, machines. And like all components in Plex, I simply drag and drop the blocks from the library into the yellow schematic here on the right. So let's first look at the squirrel cage induction machine model. Um, once in the schematic, uh, basically double clicking the block gives us access to the machine's block parameter window. And from here you can um, readily uh, modify the, the parameters We'll see how those are actually um, instantiated in, under the hood in just a second. Um, also from the window, kind of like any uh, analysis or, or block parameter window in Plex, you can also access the help documentation from this button here at the bottom. So I'm gonna click on that. Um, each machine description then includes details uh, about the, the circuit model, the relevant equations as well as the parameters and uh, their units. So this particular model is based on a stationary reference frame and equations are provided then for the rotor flux as are for uh, the electromechanical system. Um, the documentation provides a good overview for users however it's also possible to inspect uh, the blocks physical implementation in more detail. So all machines are actually open for user inspection, as are many other blocks in Plex. And to do this, we would right click on the component, brings up a, a context menu, and then we see there's a subsystem option. And we can choose to look under the mask of the subsystem. And for non-standard electric machines, uh, users can also use this um, option to to not just inspect the models, but also use them as a starting point for their own uh, customized model. So again, rather than developing new ones from scratch, the existing library components can be modified to meet specific requirements. So to do that, then you would actually first need to break the library link, which is the option further down here. Um, and what this does is essentially creates a local copy of the block that is not linked to the official library implementation. But let's like take a take a look then inside the induction machine itself. Um, there's a few things I'm going to point out under the mask. The most uh, obvious trait is that we can see the classic induction machine circuit model, the equivalent circuit here, um, where we have at the top level uh, three stator terminals, so three uh, ports on the left side, and um, you see that the signal imports are here. Um, so this is uh, connected then to the stator circuit as well as the rotor circuit on the right side. So this is an electrical circuit in, in the black connections. And then just below this, we have a set of uh, control library blocks, specifically the, the function block um, with all of the connections for these in green. And then at the bottom, a set of mechanical components in purple 
um, where we have a uh, an out port, but it's a mechanical port um, that connects from the machine shaft um, to the outside world, which is accessible here at the, the top level via the flange. So back at the top of the circuit, then we see we have uh, via these two amp meters, basically from the stator and uh, from the uh, rotor sides then, we're measuring the currents. Um, these get multiplexed here together and passed to calculations for the machine torque and fluxes. Um, also can highlight uh, under this subsystem, we have a sophisticated implementation of a Clark transformation, which facilitates the connection of the um, uh, external inductances in series with the, the stator windings, but also transforms then the, um, it simplifies basically the, the system and the computations by converting the AC uh, three-phase current and voltages into DC signals. Uh, so while my, maybe not immediately obvious, this whole circuit here is uh, actually a parallel DQ frame circuit where uh, vectorization occurs um, at this node here. So we have VD and VQ multiplexed together uh, coming in to control this voltage source uh, applied again for direct and quadrature voltages at the left side of the circuit. Um, user parameters are provided for all of the passive components. So if we go back to our mask, we see the stator resistance, uh, RS, leakage, etc. cetera. Um, so the, the user is uh, defining and parameterizing all of the, the passive uh, values then underneath. Um, we have uh, the intermediate equations, as I mentioned, uh, for, for flux. Um, that as well as the currents are then used to calculate the flux linkages. Um, we then use the measured rotor speed with the flux linkages to determine the voltages that are applied to the uh, rotor voltage source here. You can see then at the bottom of the circuit, we apply the calculated torque to a voltage source, to a torque source rather, in the mechanical domain. Um, the torque calculation itself, as I said, is in a function block. Uh, it's currently grayed out. I would need to first break the library link to be able to modify the, the circuit and the, therefore this equation. Um, but this is the, the classic uh, torque equation um, that you would see in literature, but of course also in our documentation. Um, there is uh, internal inertia and friction in the model that is also defined by parameters in the mask. And um, then we have, uh, yeah, uh, we're using the rotor speed as I mentioned here, but then ultimately this is connected to a mechanical flange, which facilitates interfacing to additional mechanical components on the outside of the machine, such as uh, gears, stiffness and damping, loads, uh, or sources and sensors of any type. And so when combined with the electrical and control domains, users can model and simulate complete electromechanical drive systems such as uh, servo mechanisms and electric powertrains for, for vehicle applications. So maybe I'll just quickly show then um, the mechanical component library. So that's a little bit further down when scrolling here. We have one dimensional translational and rotational blocks for motion. Um, further broken down into sources, sensors, and components. Um, so this, um, again, purple domain includes nonlinear non blocks for modeling things uh, like, like clutches, uh, backlash, uh, hard stops, uh, stick slip friction, just to name a few. Um, it also includes a rotational reference component for connecting a machine to a common reference frame. Uh, but I'd like to show another machine now. So scrolling up further here, um, let's look at the permanent magnet synchronous machine. And double clicking again in the PMSM uh, block parameter window, the, I want to first point out the, the model option here. So um, here users can select which model they would like to use in the simulation. And this refers literally to the, the machine design, the machine implementation itself. So many models for synchronous machines are based on a reference frame where the DQ axes rotate at the speed of the rotor. 
or we say that the equations are transformed, transformed to a frame or, or, or of reference that is fixed to the rotor. So that's known as the rotor reference frame, kind of the, the classical design. Um, but uh, some machine models, uh, often synchronous machines, but it also could be induction machines. And uh, obviously in this case, um, we have an additional option to use a unique implementation where individual stator windings consist of controlled voltage sources behind variable reactances. So this is the voltage behind reactants or VBR implementation. It allows you to investigate the effects of dead time as well as failure modes and to develop mitigation strategies for those. Um, so for the, the PM drive, one potentially dangerous condition is tripping during flux weakening operation. Uh, that can result in uncontrolled currents and torques, which is very undesirable. And unlike the traditional rotor reference frame model, the, the uh, VBR formulations also allow uh, you to directly interface to an arbitrary external network. So that could be a, a diode rectifier or open circuited machine terminals. And um, so I'll then look under the mask of this one as well. Um, you'll see this has a second layer. So I will further look under the mask of the electrical subsystem. And we see this is a configurable subsystem where at the top level of the mask, you can choose uh, which is the active implementation. So here's the, the classic uh, rotor reference frame where we have um, basically controlled current sources uh, as well as um, phase voltage uh, measurements. And these are passed actually to a C-script block. Uh, so this is, I'm not gonna give a, a primer then on the C-script block here, but you see that we have basically defined all of the equations. Um, so for example, the flux linkages and the torque, uh, just as we saw earlier, are defined in C code here. Uh, but in the second tab, we have our voltage behind reactance implementation, um, where we have, uh, again, C scripts implementing the logic uh, and our controlled voltage behind variable reactance, as I've now discussed. Um, so this is a, a very valuable implementation option for, for a number of different things, um, but it is worth noting that the VBR implementation is numerically less efficient than the traditional um, rotor reference frame one. It's also maybe uh, worth mentioning that the DQ convention used in Plex for the for this PMSM um, is well. Th so there's there's uh, different schools of thought I'd, uh, as as I understand regarding the DQ axis definition for rotating reference frame systems. And in Plex, we deploy what's typically known as the more European convention, where the Q axis, the quadrature axis, is aligned with uh, the phase A winding at rotor angle zero, which means it's pointing down in the XY plane and therefore leads the D axis by 90 degrees pointing to the right in the XY plane. Um, so further than the, the back EMF in phase A is proportional to the negative sine of omega T. And therefore in a lot of our demos, you'll see that a positive quadrature current produces a positive torque. Um, so this can all be, um, yeah, read in, in our manual and documentation, you'll see that the equations there do um, correspond then to that convention. Good. Um, so I, I also mentioned then our uh, non-excited synchronous machine. So I'll just grab that for comparison. So maybe open up then the block parameters and implementation side by side. Um, so we see under the mask that the lookup tables are deployed um, as uh, here. Basically, if we look under the mask of these, uh, we have all these lookup tables. And then the block parameters, the magnetizing inductance tab um, further has uh, the, the lookup tables that I mentioned where the magnetizing inductances are entered by the user in a matrix format. Um, but but this component is is more advanced. Um, it will be covered in a future webinar by itself. Um, I will mention there is a built-in demo model and application note on our website that discusses the block in more detail if you want to investigate it yourself. So I'll leave you to do that. 
Um, and it is time then to an explore an application example. So um, uh, today, again, we're going to look at a simple but intuitive DC motor drive with an armature chopper circuit and um, the Plex demo library. Well, let me just hop back to that. Um, so if you go to the window menu here, demo models. So it has a, a number of categories. Um, you can filter by different uh, domain types. So a number of the machine components, for example, a machine model models with machines will have mechanical components, um, but these are further broken down into categories. Um, so the ones that include electric machines, um, of course, you will find those in the motor drives. Um, there's also uh, automation or motion control category, uh, automotive applications. There are also some uh, wind systems with machines in the power generation category. Um, but as I said, we are going to take a look at this one here today. Um, so each demo model includes a description of the electrical circuit or the plant, um, its control system model, and as well as the simulation results. You can download the model documentation also as a PDF file uh, by clicking this button here on the top right. But let's open the model itself. So I just want to rearrange here to maximize um, what I'd like to show. And um, yeah, so so maybe I'll start by by mentioning the uh, brushed DC machine here that started up from standstill. Uh, we have a DC source on the left of 240 volts that is applied to the armature winding and a second DC voltage source of 120 volts applied to the field winding. Um, we have a chopper circuit con uh, consisting of this IGBT and diode uh, further that's connected to the armature winding. And that enables uh, speed control basically by controlling the armature current. Um, during the simulation, there are step changes in the speed set point as well as the load torque. Um, so those uh, changes are applied with the, the two step function sources that I'm pointing out. There is a nested uh, control scheme here, a nested loop controller that is used to turn on and off the IGBT, uh, which uh, chops then the armature current, as I said. So to regulate the speed of the DC machine, there is an outer speed loop and um, we see that the speed is, is uh, measured and fed back here uh, as and compared to a set point. From there, from there, we create an error function that is passed to a PI algorithm. Um, so this is a new library component. Um, it's a continuous PI in this case uh, with an anti-windup mechanism that is implemented. And again, you can look under the mask to see how that's been uh, done. And um, from the PI controller determines a reference current value that is uh, then used for the armature winding. And the reference concurrent is compared to the actual armature current. And that error signal is then passed to a uh, hysteretic hysteresis current controller that generates the switching signal for the IGBT. So the hysteresis or, or bang bang controller uses a uh, relay block. And in this case that has an error band of plus minus one amp. Um, so the last thing maybe I'll mention before running a simulation is the mechanical blocks in, uh, in, the, in the model here that are interfaced to the mechanical flange off the machine shaft. So as uh, I previously mentioned, there's a load torque applied to the system on this uh, torque source here, controlled torque source, and a mechanical speed sensor is also included. So we could, um, for measurements, alternatively choose to monitor the speed using a probe, similar to the probed electrical torque here that's fed into the scope. Um, so we see the rotational speed, uh, position, and other signals available. Um, but we chose to do that with a sensor block. So at this point with uh, the scope open, I can run a simulation. 
we see we get the results very quickly. Uh, I'll just quickly um, explain what we're looking at here. We have the armature current at the top, uh, armature voltage, which is probably the, the least interesting of the four, the rotor speed, and the electrical torque. Um, so we notice then uh, we have startup and then um, an acceleration period. And uh, once the acceleration uh, hits the set point of 150 uh, radians per second, um, we see the armature current falls. Uh, but prior to that, it was actually uh, saturated. So the um, PI controller output was saturated. And at that point, the maximum torque was applied here. Um, but again, once the machine reaches the commanded 150 radians per second speed, the current uh, decreases significantly and is basically at a steady state op condition. Um, the average electrical torque at that point is 10 Newton meters, and that will actually um, uh, equal the load torque at that point. So then at a time of uh, one second during the simulation, we see that there is a a step in the speed command from 150 to 175 radians per second. So that occurs here. And um, there is a resulting uh, sudden increase then in the armature current and torque. And uh, further then at uh, two seconds, we have a step in the electrical torque from 10 to 30 Newton meters, again, as defined here. And when the rotor speed, um, uh, the desired rotor speed is achieved, then the, the current and torque settle again. Um, one thing we could examine in more detail is the effect of the fixed hysteresis band. So if I zoom in to the waveforms, um, we see that uh, around the, the mean of the armature current, we basically have, uh, we can see that plus or minus uh, one bang bang limiting uh, of the controller um, of the one amp limit in either direction. Of course, this means that the magnitude of the torque ripple also remains unchanged through the simulation. But all right then, that uh, basically concludes my planned talking points for introducing the electric machine library in Plex. Uh, again, with the goal of making these blocks more approachable and, and understood to you. There are many more demo models in Plex um, that will discuss, for example, uh, uh, drive failure modes and fault mitigation strategies, flux weakening operation, uh, and other advanced topics uh, specifically for control as well. Um, I mentioned the uh, lookup table-based PMSM machine here, so feel free to explore these. Um, Yep, so uh, we do appreciate you all tuning in today. Hope that you found this to be helpful. A recording of the session will be made available on our website and YouTube pages within a day or so. And I'm now going to start answering questions that have been asked in the GoTo, GoTo uh, webinar control panel. And of course, if you have a question but didn't get a chance to ask it yet, now is the time. Thank you.